name's Mary from Teacher's Pet Dog Training, and we're just going to talk a little bit about how can I use a little flute pole in my training as a reward for the dog. So what we're doing, it's really simple. You simply have a toy on the end of a dressage whip, a little bit of rope, and we've taught Brant that if I say the word yes, that is a release word into the toy. So that's one thing that has to be established before you can use this as, a, as an actual um, exercise in your work. Two, I want to make sure that if I ask him to release it out, that he'll actually release it for me. And three, if I ask him to rest, that he can go into rest mode. So with that, all th those three things are really important before you then can utilize this uh, in your work to get him to release into something to play with it, to release it, and then to re-engage in it. So those pieces have to be in place. So yes. Out. Out. Yes. on rest I'm starting to teach him not to go after the item good I use my duration marker good means I like what you're doing please keep doing it if he were to break I'd go uh-uh that means that's a mistake let's not do that but don't keep keep trying yes and then yes gives him permission to go back into the toy again good boy so this is really good teaching him about impulse control it's really good just to help him get exercise moving right to left um, he really likes this, so we're just utilizing his, uh, his natural desire to engage and grab and play with something. But once we've worked out those pieces, then it can look something like this. Rest. Yes. So it's really important that when I say yes, he'll want to go after it. Number two, out. If I ask for an out, he'll release. Yes. Releases him back into it. Out. Rest. If I ask for a rest period, he can rest so he's not getting overheated, overworked. Yes. Give him the release word. He goes back into it again. And then if he's not, if he's, you know, if he's, if he's starting to get tanked right now. But if he had a lot more in the tank, I can actually use this out. Yes, and I can move this, and now I can start to work his body a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. Yes, now we can get it. Boom, good boy. All right, one thing I want to point out is uh, Brant is four, almost four, and he uh, is completely, he's full grown. He's been doing a lot of this right, left turning stuff for a while. So he's pretty, he's real strong. His body is strong in that area. If you have a puppy, however, I wouldn't do quite as much cutting uh, until they're really, their muscles are completely developed. Their bodies are completely, the bones are completely developed. Okay. So with that, with a puppy, you can just use a toy on the end of a rope. So again, the same rules would start to apply. Yes. He's able to take it with the word yes. And again, there's a whole training process that goes along with this. Out. Yes. I can still get him moving forward. I can gently pull, keep him engaged in the game. I come right up. Yes. Good boy. So here he's still able to pull and engage. I keep it alive and kicking for him. He has fun with it. So this will be a lot easier on his little body, especially if you're dealing with puppies. Yay, you're so good. So good. Out. Yes. Good boy. So I keep a little bit of tension in it, so I create that desire to want to play with me and tug with me. Good boy. I want to also make sure I give him a striking zone, what we call a striking zone. Out. Yes. So that when he jumps into it, he doesn't jump into me or something. So we keep him safe. Out. Rest. Yes. So I give him a nice little spot where he can grab the toy. Oh, you're so good. Out. Yes. 
boy. The boy. Out. Rest. Yes. Good boy. So good. So you can see, yes. When I'm playing with him now with just the toy on a rope, there's not as much cutting. So this is much easier on their little bodies. Yes. Good boy. But this, you can see, still helps with engagement, that desire to want to play and tug, and my ability to have a green light, red light, where I out, yes. I can get him to release into it, out, yes. Or release back into it or out of it. So I wanna make sure that when, I, <clears throat> when I'm gonna ask for him to release it, yes. I make sure I'm not pulling on it at the same time I'm asking him to release because my body would be telling him to hang on and my mouth would be telling him to, to let go. So I make sure the toy is deadened here. Yes. When I ask for him to release, I take the energy out of the toy. So as I take the energy out of the toy, yes. So he knows when the energy is done, when there's no energy, he tends to release it. Good boy. All right. So a couple things, when a dog, he's used to a soft toy and releasing it, usually I'll use something that is a little stiffer like um, a leather tug or a jute tug. And as I'm playing, if they don't release, just be patient. And just, you may have to hang out there and keep your, the biggest thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that he can't get to any other part of the toy or the tug and that there's no strings that they can grab. And you put your hands right next to his muzzle and then you just wait until he releases it. As soon as he releases it, give him a striking zone, mark with the word yes, and let him go after the toy again. So what I don't wanna do is hold it out here and then he does an ear of corn where he just kind of self-satisfies on it and he chews up and down on it. So here, out, yes. He releases it nicely, out, yes. Out, rest. Yes, go boy, out. Good, good boy, all done. So important, if he was getting sticky and he didn't want to let go, I would simply keep my, I would make sure that this toy, there's not pieces hanging out on the side. I really stabilize this toy and I would just wait until he released it. The moment he released it, I'd say yes, and I'd let him, I wouldn't shove it into his mouth. I will move it away as if it's trying to get away, but give him a striking zone. And what I mean by that is a lot of people after they release it and they say yes, their hand turns here like this. Now their knuckles are exposed, the dog grabs them by the knuckles. So make sure that when you, once he releases it, you say yes, you give him a nice place to move forward where he can strike the toy, not bumping into you, but he can actually go to the side and grab the meat of the toy again without grabbing your knuckles by accident. If, you, if your dog releases the toy, it's really important that immediately you release the dog back into the toy because if you release the, if he releases it and then we play around with it and we mess around with it or we won't give it back he, he starts to feel well why would i release it because now you're hanging on to it so it's really important in order to get them to want to release that you're going to release it and then let them have it again release it and let them have it again super important in teaching them that that's part of the game is when i release it i'm going to get it back again make sure that Brant gets this toy a lot yes because I do not want him to think that I'm trying to tease him 
or not give it to him. I don't want to create frustra uh, unhealthy frustration or what we call non-productive frustration. Uh, a little bit of frustration is okay, but out. Yes. So a lot of times I want to make sure that he gets access to it out. Yes. As soon as he releases it, I'm going to give him access to it again. Out. Yes. So that he realizes, aha, if I out the toy, I'm actually going to get it back again. Out. Rest. Yes. Boy. And so all of this really is great because then he starts to understand kind of like red light, green light. When am I allowed to have it? When am I not allowed to have it? Good boy. If I release it, I'm going to actually get it back. Then when we're all done with the activity, I would simply say, Brant, all done. And the toy will go away and then that'll be it. So he learns a couple different things. Yes means he can get the toy. Out means he should release the toy. Rest means he has to take a little rest so he can catch his breath. And then once I take it and we're all done with it, then I'll say, all done, and then the game is over. The other thing I like to start with is when I start a game with him and I bring it out, I'll say, Brant, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. And that starts the game. Good boy. Good boy. Out. So let me show you that one more time so you can see what it looks like. I'd have it out. I'd bring it out. Brant, are you ready? Yes. So that he learns we're going to start the game. Then at the end, when we're all done, and I bring it back out, rest, good boy, all done, and then that would be the end of it. Until the next time I bring it out again, I bring it out again, hey Brant, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. You can see how he readies himself because he knows that the word, are you ready, means that the game is going to actually start. Good boy. Brant, out, all done. So the other thing is I do not let him have this at the end because I don't want him to just go off and chew it and then it'll start to lose its power. I want it to keep it, retain its power. So we play, I have possession of it when it's over and then I'll bring it back out again and then he gets to play with it again. All right, hope those little tips help. Have fun with your pup, they'll love you for it.